We welcome you here to the Athlone Civic Center tonight, one and all of you. We are coming to the end of a series of lectures by Mr. Ahmad Didat, which included topics such as what the Bible says about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Christ in Islam, may Allah be pleased with Nabi Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, and the crucifixion with an X I O N or crucifixion with a C T I O N. Tonight the topic under discussion will be Al Quran, the visual miracle. It has also been styled in what I as a person perhaps feel is a better title, Al Quran, the ultimate and the perpetual, perpetual miracle. We are fortunate indeed, for those who don't know, I now have great joy and pleasure in handing you over yes, to Mr. Ahmad Dinat to start his lecture on Al-Quran, the visual miracle. But before he starts, could I please ask those brothers to find seats in the audience and if you have a seat vacant near you, please put up your hand so that those people can have an idea as to where they should go to. Mr. Ahmad Dinat, the Al-Quran, the visual miracle. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقالوا لولا أنزل عليه آيات من ربه قل إنما الآيات عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين أولم يكفهم أن أنزلنا عليك الكتاب يطلع عليه إن في ذلك لا رحمة وذكرة لقوم يؤمنون صدق الله صدق الله العظيم. Mr. Chairman, brothers and sisters, by now I'm sure you got used to the Holy Quran, the volumes that you have been buying, because up to now I think since we started our series, about a thousand Qurans have been taken by our brethren and our sisters, and I've been suggesting to you how to get. The maximum benefit from this translation that if you are told, as I'm going to tell you now, that the verses I have quoted are from Surah Ankabut. Ankabut. Ankabut means spider, but you will not find a, find it under S spider. You will find it under Ankabut, under A. In the index at the back of this volume, you will find under A and Kabut, and it will tell you that it is chapter 29, surah number 29, and the verses I read to you were verses number 50 and 51. In it, Allah Bari Taala, He says, "Wakalu," and they say, "Who the unbelievers?" They say. The atheists, the skeptics, the mushriks, they say, "Laula unzil alayhi ayatum min Rabbi." So why is not a sign, a miracle, sent down to him, to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from his Lord? Like what they wanted to see, the Holy Prophet putting up a ladder into heaven, walking up, and bringing a book down. That is what they wanted. They are asking him. He said, "Look, look at that Mount Uhud. Why don't you make it into gold? Why don't you make water to gush out in the desert?" Allah Barri Taala reminds us in the Holy Quran that they had asked Hazrat Musa alayhi salam more impossible things than what they are asking our Nabi. They were asking his own people, the Bani Israel, the Jews. We are asking Hazrat Musa alayhi salam that we want to see God face to face. Bring Allah down. We want to see Him. Face to face. So Allah says, "Look, this is nothing. What they are asking you is nothing compared to what they are asking Musa alayhi salam." 
Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, he was also given endless trouble by his people. On Saturday night, we were dealing with one of those requests made by the Jews. He said, Master, we would have a sign of thee. We want you to show us a miracle. And despite all his miracles, they didn't hearken to his message. They didn't respond. All the miracles, giving life to the dead, healing the blind and the lepers, turning water into wine, killing 2,000 pigs, drying up a fig tree from its very roots, still in the storm, all these things had no effect upon the people. This is what happens. When you come down to the, to the level of the materialist, the atheist, the agnostic, the skeptic, he is going to discount it. Some reason or other, he's going to find fault with it. It's a sickness with man. When he's asking for miracles, no miracles can satisfy him. No miracles. Because it is a sickness. So Allah says, Qul, tell them, إِنَّمَا الْآيَاتُ إِنْدَ Allah." Most certainly the ayahs, the signs, miracles are in the hands of my Lord. Listen to his humble, sweet approach. He says, signs, miracles are in Allah's hands. When Jesus Christ was asked for miracles, he said, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it. A wicked and adulterous generation. That's how he addressed the people who made those requests. He was provoked. He was shaken up. The Holy Prophet Muhammad is made to say, Kul innam al ayatu in the Allah. He says, most certainly signs, miracles are in the hands of my Lord. ana I am only a clear-cut warner. This is my job, is to deliver the message to you as it is given to me. That's my job, not to entertain you. Awalam yakfi. Allah is asking, is this not enough for you? Is, not, is this not enough for them? Anna anzalna alaykal kitaba That we have revealed to you the book. You, O Muhammad, a person who doesn't know how to read or write. And only Allah bari ta'ala says, is this not enough for them? That we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, the book. Look at this book. Who brought it? A man who didn't know how to read or write. The volume. This is an encyclopedia. We knew this is given by Allah. But the enemy says, Muhammad wrote the book. He wrote the book. Says, all right, on the human level, you see, you have the Christian Bible. Here, the Roman Catholic Bible got 73 books. More than 40 different authors. More than 40 different authors went to write this one book. Here is the Protestant Bible, 66 books, more than 40 different persons went to write this book. Here is one man, an illiterate man, and he brings such a book as this, and it puts to shame all the learning of the philosophers, of the theologians, puts to shame. One man, if he did the job, he didn't do it. This is Allah's kalam. But even if he did it, as he puts to shame all the authors of any other religious scripture. One man. And dealing with all subjects under the earth. Every problem you have, he gives you an answer for them. Every problem. So Allah says, is this not enough for them? That you are the person who is bringing this book. Anna anzalna alaykal kitaba. Yutla alayhim, which you recite to them, rehearse to them. Inna fi thalika la rahmatun wa zikra. And in these are signs. It's a mercy and a reminder. In this is a mercy, in the Quran is a mercy and a reminder. The minun For a people who have faith, people who have iman, for them there is a sign. But for the blind, for the sick, people like Abu Jahl, nothing, no proof. No proof is good enough. You can bring the moon down, you can bring the sun down, it will not satisfy them. Our Nabi Karim says, he's made to say, say, I do not say to you that in my hands are the treasures of God, nor do I say to you, very I'm an angel, only what is revealed to me do I follow. And he's commanded in the Holy Quran to say, Qul, tell them, Innamana basharum mithlukum. So most certainly I'm a man like yourself. 
but the revelation of God has come to me in Namallah Ilahum Wahid that your Allah is one Allah. Faman kana yarju liqa rabbihi fal yamal amalan salihan. So whosoever wishes to meet his Lord, let him do deeds of righteousness. Let him do goodness, good work. Wala yushirik bi ibad di rabbihi ahada. And in the worship of his Lord, admit no one as partner. I'm a man like you. The only difference between me and you is this, that Allah has revealed his messages to me, which I'm conveying them to you. This is the only distinction he claims. He is not God. He is not the son of God. He is a man like you. He is a prophet of God. He is inspired by God. Now, the lecture tonight, Al-Quran, a visual miracle, is not only an answer to the curiosity mongers, but it is also a proof to some of our brethren who might be weak in the Iman, weak in the faith. To strengthen the Iman. And above all, this lecture is for those of our friendly critics. You remember, I can't remember when it was this, uh, we had this lecture on Muhammad the Greatest. M Muhammad the Greatest. Now, in that lecture, I gave you references by friendly critics of Islam, people like Michael H. Hart who wrote a book and in that book in that book he put our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam number one the most influential man in history he said number one Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he put his own Lord and Savior Jesus Christ number three you remember that? those of you who were in that lecture then I gave you other references Jews Masterman a Jew a professor of the Chicago University a paid servant of the American government. He also puts our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi number one as the greatest leader of mankind, Muhammad, and he puts his own hero, Moses, number two. Then I gave you the reference to La Martine, a Frenchman in 1854. He put our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the greatest man that ever lived. Those references were made in that lecture. And I'm going to make a few more references. But all those beautiful tributes I spoke about, that the non-Muslims, the enemies of Islam, Jews and Christians, what they had to say about our Nabi, which many Muslims are timid to express. Muslims themselves are terrified to open their mouths to say that our Nabi Kareem sallam, is the greatest man that ever lived. As Allah says, Wa inna kala ala khulukin azim, is the most certainly thou, O Muhammad, standest on the highest pinnacle of behavior. Allah testifies. And the non-Muslim confirms. It makes us very happy. But all those beautiful tributes is creating a subtle problem for us. And that problem is, why do they not accept Islam? When they can say things that we are afraid to say, an American in America, publishing a book of 572 pages, and he puts our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu number one, the most influential man in history. This man, Jews Masuman, is number one, the greatest leader of all times, Muhammad. And on and on. Why do these people not accept Islam? Now I was thinking that perhaps these people were hypocrites. Munafiks. And you know, in the Holy Quran, Allah describes the destination of the hypocrite, the Munafik. So, in al Munafikina, fit darakil asfalim in a nar. So, most certainly the Munafik, the hypocrite, will be in the deepest depth of Jahannam, hellfire. The hypocrite. Deepest depth. Not the adulterer, not the gambler, but the hypocrite. Deepest depth of Jahannam. Now, is this the destiny of these people who are going out of their way to? promote, to proclaim the greatness of our Prophet Is this the destiny? This is what I was thinking, worried about. Now we learn that look, they have a certain sickness. These great men, these beautiful tributes that they pay, but at the back of the mind there is a sickness, which on the face of it you can't see. 
Well, but when you go deep down into that thinking, you discover the sickness. Michael H. Hart. Coming to Michael H. Hart, I read his beautiful tribute, his testimony. Why he chose our Nabi to be number one. Why? And while explaining his reasons, he says, Now here, you'll find the sickness. I want you to discover the sickness. The sickness is here. He says, moreover, he is the author of the Muslim holy scriptures, the Quran. Moreover, he is the author of the Muslim holy scriptures, the Quran. A collection of certain of Muhammad's insights. I think it's about time that you, brethren, you know, you stop your, your, your cross chat, otherwise you better put, switch off your, your machines. Because you are distracting everybody else, please. Says, so moreover, he is the author of the Muslim holy scriptures, the Quran, a collection of certain of Muhammad's insights, which he believed had been directly revealed to him by Allah. You see the sickness? The sickness is, this is a collection of, he is the author. Who is the author? He, Muhammad He is the author of the Muslim holy scriptures, the Quran, a collection of certain of Muhammad's insights. This is not revelation as far as it's concerned. Allah didn't reveal it. These are Muhammad's great thinking. So as such, he said, look, we take off our hat to the man. The man was great. A man who can create a nation, an empire, and a religion. Who can write a book and guide millions of people. A thousand million at the present moment. Are living and dying by this word of God. He's a great man. But these are Muhammad's cleverness. He's a very clever man. See, it's Muhammad's insights. This is what he thought. He is the author. So, if Muhammad is the author, why must we follow him? We give him credit. If he's great, we say he's great. He's, be, he's superior to Jesus. The Jew says he's superior to Moses. But why must we follow him? Muhammad is very clever. That is the sickness. Reverend Bosworth Smith, a Christian missionary, he wrote a book called Muhammad and Muhammadanism. Of course, these are wrong terms. We haven't got the time to go into the details about Muhammadanism for some other time. He says in his book, that book I named, illiterate himself, scarcely able to read or write. He was yet the author of a book. He was yet the author of a book, which is a poem, a code of laws, a book of common prayers, and a Bible all in one. What a tribute this Christian missionary is paying this Holy Quran, which is a poem, a code of laws, a book of common prayers and a Bible all in one. And is reverenced to this day by a sixth of the whole human race as a miracle of purity of style, of wisdom and of truth. It is the one miracle claimed by Muhammad. His standing miracle, he called it. And a miracle indeed it is. Miracle indeed it is. Why doesn't he accept Islam? Did you see the sickness? So he was yet the author of a book. See, at the back of the mind, Muhammad wrote the book. So he said, look, we give him credit. It's fantastic, this book. Poem, code of laws, book of common prayers, what they use in the churches, like that. It serves that purpose as well. And a Bible, all in one book. And it's a miracle. It's a, and a miracle. He's the only miracle Muhammad claimed. He performed many miracles. We can go into details. We haven't got the time for that. But this is the only miracle he kept on claiming. Again and again, he said, look at the book. Look at the book. As the miracle you're looking for, look at the book. And says, a miracle indeed it is. Why is he not accepting Islam? Because Muhammad wrote the book. See the sickness? Thomas Carlyle. He pays a tribute to our Nabiya Karim Sallallahu He says, the word of such a man is a voice direct from nature's own heart. Men do and must listen to that as to nothing else. All else is wind in comparison. Rubbish compared to what this man is talking. All else is wind, hot air, compared to what this man is talking. Why doesn't he accept Islam? He said, again, the same thing, that he is the author of a book. Can you see the sickness? So at the back of their minds, Muhammad wrote the book. Muhammad wrote the book. So if he wrote the book, he said, well, we take off our hat to the man. But it's not necessary for us to accept his religion. We give him due credit. Now this sickness is nothing new. This sickness 
existed in the time of our Nabiya Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we find this sickness described in Surah al muddasir Chapter 74, Chapter 74, verse 25. It says, in haza illa qawlul bashar that these are the words of a man the words of the quran people like abu jahl walid ibn mughira they are saying that these are the words of a man in other words it is muhammad who wrote this book in haza illa qawlul bashar in answer to that allah says Sa'uslihi saqar. So soon I'll put them into hellfire. Anybody who makes a false charge against my messenger, I'll put him into hell. Jahannam. Wa ma adraka ma saqar. And what will tell you what hellfire is? What do you know what hell is? Do you know what Jahannam is? It's only a word that you have heard. Hell, hell, hell. If you really knew what hell is, you would mend your ways. These are only words that we utter. Hell. So Allah says, and what will tell you what hellfire is? It leaves nothing, it pays nothing. That's what hell does. All consuming. Darkening and changing the color of man. Alayha tis ata asha. Over it are 19. Over it are 19. Now, what is this 19? Among so many things that Allah is talking about, I'll put you into hell, I'll disconfiture you, I'll, you know, darken your faces, and I will fix you up with 19. Over it, over the charge, you say Muhammad wrote the book, Allah says, I will fix you up with 19. And it's such a simple sentence in Arabic. Anybody who knows Arabic will tell you. Alayha means over it are this ata nine asher ten nine ten nineteen. Simple, very simple. So when our little children want to know, say, Daddy, what is this nineteen? It's such a simple sentence. How are you gonna explain? So you say, Well, maybe my son, you know, she's talking about hellfire, maybe hell has got nineteen gates, and the nineteen gates have got nineteen gatekeepers. So nineteen angels of hell. This was the standard explanation for 700 years after the revelation. Maybe these are the angels of hell. 19 angels, 19 gates, 19 gatekeepers, angels. For the first time, the great Imam Fakhruddin Razi, a commentator of the Holy Quran, he says, no, these are not angels, but these are faculties. And he got his cue from these Quranic verses, Alam Najallahu Ainaini. Say, have we not given you a pair of eyes? Wali sanum and a tongue, washafataini and a pair of lips. And I've shown you the two broad highways. Allah is going to question us on the day of judgment that I gave you eyes to see. Couldn't you see what happened to the people who flowed? flouted the laws of God, what happened to Noah and his people, what happened to Lot and his people, what happened to Je Hitler's Germany, what happened to Mikado's Japan, what happened to Mussolini's Italy and Bhutha's South Africa. Couldn't you see? Couldn't you learn a lesson? Were you blind? He's going to ask you. He gave you lip, mouth and lips to ask people. Couldn't you ask people for guidance? He gave you ears. Couldn't you hear? So he gives us the five physical senses and their intellectual counterparts and other psychological factors and he gives, gives us a list of 19 and he says, Wallahu alam bis sawab. In the end, Allah knows best. This is what I think. That it means this, not angels, but this. In our own time, Maulana Ashraf Ali Thani, he's passed away. He is recognized as a mujaddid on the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent. Darul Ulum Deoban, he is the father of it. Darul Ulum Jalalabad, he is the father of it. Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanwi. In his commentary he says that these are not angels, these are not faculties, these are fundamentals. What's that? He says the five pillars of Islam, the seven articles of faith, and the major commandments, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not do shirk, thou shall not commit adultery, and he gives us a list of 19. So Allah will confront you with all this, fix you up with all this, 
And he also ends his beautiful tafsir by saying, Wallahu a'lam bisawab. In the end, Allah knows best. Now, what are we to decide? I am telling you, my brethren, today, that the answer to this alayha tisat ashar is very simple. It needs no interpretation. These are all tafsirs. I say it needs no tafsir. The answer is in the mouth of your little ones, your child, your son or daughter, going to school standard two. Ask your son or your daughter, what is 19? And your child will tell you, daddy, it's 10 plus 9. Am I right? What is 19? 10 plus 9. I said, that's the answer. You got it. You need no interpretation, no explanation is required. 19 means 19. But how can anybody fix up anybody with 19? Because this will fix you up with 19. How can you fix you up with 19? I said, very easy once you see it. While we didn't see it, we have to conjecture other guesses, somehow justify simple sentence like, over it are 19. So, now once we see it, as it's so easy, and it's visual, you'll be able to see it visually with your eyes, unless you are blind. If you are blind, you have to ask somebody whether this guy, what he's showing you on the screen, whether it is real or whether he's imagining things. He's taking it out of his head, or are you able to prove it to yourself? With your eyes, visual, with your own eyes, you'll see this miracle. And what's a miracle? The simplest definition of a miracle is an impossibility. A man is dead. You know he can't come back to life. And there comes a man, Ahmad Dida, is a Kum Bismillah, and the guy wakes up. I performed a miracle. Right? Impossible. It was certified dead. I said, come up, and the guy got up. By Allah's will. But if the man was dead for four days, perhaps drinking his grave, as we read in the Christian Bible, Jesus did to Lazarus. That's a greater miracle. You agree? If the man died spot dead and certified dead by some of the doctors, we have Dr. Mahate here. He certified his dead, take him away to the mortuary. But before they take him away, I'd make the man to wake up. So he said, that is great. You know, he's performed a miracle. But if the man was dead and stinking for four days, and then Jesus comes along and says, Kumbi is nilla, and if he wakes up, it's a greater miracle. You agree? See, the impossibility is increasing now. And after a thousand years, the bones have rotted in the grave, and if the man is brought back to life, greater miracle, greater impossibility. So the greater the impossibility, the higher the miracle. Simple. A miracle is an impossible thing that can't be done. You do it, you say it's a miracle. Mojiza. So now, when this verse was revealed, Alayha tis ata ashar, over it are 19. According to tradition, the archangel Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam, he pauses. He doesn't complete the surah. We have knowledge about the shan and zul when the Quran is revealed, what happened, what not. So according to that history, as soon as he said, Alayha tis ata ashar, he pauses there. And now he starts completing the balance of the first revelation. Instead of completing that surah, he starts completing the balance of the first revelation. And the first revelation was, it was in the cave of Hira, Jabal and Nur, the mountain of light, 27th of the month of Ramadan, that the archangel Jibreel comes to our Nabi Karim sallam, and commands him in his mother tongue, Iqra, read or proclaim or recite and he says, Ma Nabi Qari, I'm not learned. So the angel commands him a second time, Iqra, read. He says, Ma Nabi Qari. Third time, the angel presses him hard and he says, Iqra, Bismi Rabbi Kallari Khalaq. So read, in the name of thy Lord and Cherisher who created. So our Nabi says, Iqra, Bismi Rabbi Kallari Khalaq. So Khalaq al-insan min alak. He says, created man out of a mere clot of congealed blood. So he says, Khalaq al-insan min alak. So Ikra wa Rabbuk al-Akram. So read, and the Lord is most bountiful. So he said, Ikra wa Rabbuk al-Akram. So Allah the Allama bil Kalam. So he who taught the use of the pen. So he said, Allah the Allama bil Kalam. So Allama al-Insana ma'alam ya'alam. So taught man that which he knew not. So he said, Allama al-Insana ma'alam ya'alam. These were the first five verses given to him. The history of that you will find in a little booklet called What the Bible Says About Muhammad. Available to you absolutely free from the Islamic Propagation Center. If you haven't got it, write for it and get it. Now, as 
after now this was the first revelation first wahi when this verse alay is a fourth revelation was alay hadith asha so instead of completing that now our nabi is given 14 more verses to that watch he was given five at first he is given 14 more how many does that make 19 So we are asking the atheist, the skeptic, our friendly critic, how did that happen? So look, he just said over it are 19, and he completes a chapter with 19 verses. How did that happen? So he will tell you it's a coincidence. You know, coincidence it just happened. The first day I did my lecture, I find Akhi there. I go to my second lecture and I find him there again. Third one, I find him again. Every lecture, he's there, first man in the first front row. So I'm asking him, Akhi, what is happening? Are you following me or am I following you? He said, No, no, no. It just happened. It's a coincidence. So what do you mean coincidence? Man, you must be deliberately coming to the meeting to sit in the front row every meeting. No, it can't be coincidence. He said, Deliberately, somebody's planning. Either I'm planning wherever he's going to go, I must go and stand there and deliver a lecture. Oh, he is planning. Wherever Dida goes, he will be there. Am I right? It can't be a coincidence. But first time, a thing can happen. Coincidence means the same thing happening, which you can't explain how, why. But I says, you know what? This first revelation is not the first chapter of the Quran. By normal human intelligence, thinking, planning, the first revelation must be the first chapter. No. But it is not the first chapter. It is the ninety-sixth chapter. Surah Al-Alaq. The first revelation is ninety-six. I said, why ninety-six? Because our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that Aki Jibreel Jibreel Salam told him this. You put number here. So according to his directives, the Quran is set as we have it now. Before his demise, demise of our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this Quran was set exactly as it is now. Surah Fatiha first, Bakara two, Ali Imran three, Nisa four, and on and on. It was set by him as we have it. So, according to instructions, is a ninety. This Allah first revelation put ninety six. So he put it ninety six. So I'm asking ninety six out of how many? It's one hundred and fourteen. As 114, you start counting backwards. There, the so Surah Nas, the last Surah, Surah Nas, Surah Falak, Ikhlas, Lahab, Nasr, and you count 19. You count 19 from the end, and you find Surah Al Alaq is 19th from the end, interlocked with 19 verses. 19 from the end. Look, this is physical, visual. I'm not giving you any interpretation. You just open your Quran in your house, and you see the number 96. This Quran you are buying, I didn't print them. This Quran I didn't print them. Any Quran you take up, you see the nine, Surah 96 is Allah, and you see 114 Surahs. You start counting by what? 19 from the end with 19 verses, physical, visual. I'm asking, how did that happen? So he says it's a coincidence. Again, he says it's a coincidence. Again, I says you know. That first five verses in Arabic, there are 19 words. The first revelation. Look, this is visual. Something you can see with your own eyes unless you are blind. If you are blind, ask somebody who's got eyes to see. 19 words. So we are asking, how did that happen? So what does he say? What does he say? Coincidence. He can't give credit to the Holy Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that he did the job. He is alleging that Muhammad wrote the book. I said, all right, we know he didn't write it, but you say he wrote. I said, right, he wrote it. I want you to keep on telling me that he did the job. Then, if he wrote it, then he did this job. Because if you say he did it, by the time I finish off with you, you will have to admit that this man Muhammad must be the Almighty God of this universe. He is the omnipotent, omniscient being. He is God. When he says. Pull in the mana, Bashar Mustafa. He said, "I'm only a man like you, but you. If he did this job, what I'm going to show you now, visually what you see. If he did it, you'll have to start worshiping him." And he says, "Don't worship me. Worship God." 
So the only way out for this, for this skeptic, the unbeliever, the enemy, is to say it's a coincidence. And you watch how he bleeds like a goat. Coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. Watch. I says, you know those 19 words, those 19 words are 76 letters in Arabic. Divide by 19, 19 times 4 on the dot. That first revelation are 19 words and those 19 words are 76 letters. 19 times 4, exact multiple of 19. So how did that happen? What does he say? Coincidence. He's bleeding like a goat. Can't you see? Again coincidence? Look, first time, possible. Second time, impossible. Improbable. Third time, impossible. Fourth time, man is going beyond now. Your logic. The same thing happening again and again and again. This is something visual. You can see with your own eyes. I am not giving you any interpretation. Any meaning. No meaning. I am giving you no meaning. I just, just look at this pattern. Can any man or group of human beings go and write a book like this? Based on this pattern? And he told you, I will fix you up with 19. Is Muhammad fixing you up with 19? No. There is somebody else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But watch. I said, alright. Discount them all. So far. We have had four or five to discount them. Forget them. We've got so many more behind us. So I said, you know, for anybody to write a book, you can't start scribbling for 23 years. Because well, that's what happened. From the age of 40 to 63, 40, at the age of 40, the first revelation comes, and for the next 23 years, that means he must be scribbling for 23 years. And at the end of 23 years, you think you're going to rehash into a book. You can't. You know, when you write a book or a booklet, like the ones I do. Look these little things here. Al-Quran, the ultimate miracle. I'm sorry they are run out. We have got very few. By May, inshallah, you'll get them. At the subject of this evening's talk. Al-Quran, the ultimate miracle. When I wrote this, I had to plan it. You agree? This one here is the Bible, God's word. I had to plan it. Wallah, I'm not lying to you. I had to plan it. This, what is his name? I had to plan it. What the... Bible says about Muhammad and all the books listed at the back. I have to plan each and every one before writing. You can't start scribbling, scribbling, and at the end of it, you go and give to the printer and say, right, print a book. You have to plan it. So if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, if he wrote this book, the Quran, he must have planned it. Logical, reasonable, yes. And the guy will agree with you. The enemy will agree with you. He must have planned it. So I said, look, he says to himself, so to say, means he didn't really do that. But for the sake of talking, reasoning, arguing, debating. I said, he said to himself, so to say, that I'm going to write a very large book. And this book will take me 23 years. But I'll have to divide this book of mine into chapters, surahs, for easy reference and study by my followers. So he decided upon 114 chapters. That's what it is in the Quran, in your Quran at home. Come down. 114. So I'm asking why did he decide on 114? Why not 113? Why not 115? Why 114? Do you know why? Because 114 is an exact multiple of 19. 19 times 6 on the dot. If you don't know how to count, if you don't know how to multiply, get a small calculator. Count it. 19 times 6 on the dot. I'm asking how did that happen? So what does he say? Coincidence. Again? I said, yes, again. I said, you know, if the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu if he wrote the book, if he wrote the book, he said to himself, so to say, please don't misunderstand me. I don't know, I'm trying to speak as simple as English that I know how. And you have an advantage with me because I didn't go to a university, so I speak very simple language. I don't use those bombastic two-yard words. You can see that. Simple words, as, so to say, as if he said it. He says to himself that my book will be a unique book. No book has ever been written before, nor will one be written in the future, a book based on mathematics and based on the number 19. I said, why 19? Is 19 an easy number to work with? No, it's one of the most difficult numbers to work with. 19 is a prime number in mathematics. It has no denominators. You can only divide by itself or 19. By 1 or by 19. 
Unlike his sister number 18, you can divide by 2, by 3, by 6, by 9. Other sister number 20, you can divide by 2, by 4, by 5, by 10. 19 is indivisible to multiply by or divide by. So he goes and chooses number 19. Imagine. Give himself homework, hard work. So he says to himself, you know, my book, the very first sentence of my book must have 19 letters. The very first sentence of my book must have 19 letters. Because you want to fix your with 19 now. Now how can you get a book to start with, with a sentence with 19 letters? The only method known to man is what is called by trial and error experimentation. You see, when I came across this discovery, I said, now let me try to see if I can write my little booklets to start with 19 letters. And the first sentence that came into my head, I know you're going to laugh, but it can't be helped. The first sentence that came into my head was, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. You know why? Because I was learning to type at one stage. You know what they call touch typing? Both the fingers. And this sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, has got all the letters of the alphabet. So you know, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, the quick brown fox, so I'm getting practice. Every finger knows where the letters are. You know, it develops a sense. So you do what you call touch typing. I was doing that. I did many things in my life, many things. So, that sentence, because I did so many times, but now when you say the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, you can't imagine how many letters they are. Can you? You can't. You have to physically count them. So I counted them. 32. It's too far out. Too far out. Too far out. <laughs> the next sentence that came into my mind, honesty is the best policy. Don't you think it's a beautiful sentence to start a book? Honesty is the best policy. How many letters? You can't imagine. You have to count. 21 out by 2 and they say a miss is as good as a mile this is by 2 I said you try in your life perhaps you'll never come across a sentence with 19 letters to start your book but my hero if he did the job my hero he did it first sentence of the Quran Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. you count it in the Quran in your Quran at home Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I have brought it down. Be seen, me, Malif, Lam, Lam, He. Mm, mm, mm. How many? How many? Nineteen. I'm asking, how did that happen? Coincidence. I want your help. Don't be afraid. I want you to keep on saying coincidence. And watch the author, what he does to you. You won't get hurt, but you'll enjoy it. I want a little cooperation from you all. You know, the tenseness must go out of you all. At the moment I can see the tenseness is still there. Could we have some cooperation from the gents? Or let me say the gentlemen in the audience. We have quite a few ladies standing. Please offer your seats. Our mothers and our sisters and our daughters, please have reverence mercy on them. And reverence please. the wombs that bore you. Reverence the wombs that bore you. Please, sure. I know it's hard, it's something that can't be helped. Some brother, if you want to come on the stage, you can come on the stage. You know, you can come on the stage, you can sit here too, you are welcome. So my dear brothers and sisters, the first sentence of the Quran with 19 letters. So our author says to himself, say, look this was very easy. This was like child's play, you know playing marbles. He did the job, very easy for him. But he says, you know what I'm going to do? Every word in that sentence must be repeated in my book an exact number of times which must be a multiple of 19. So now, to arrive at that, we must have the Quran computerized. And it has been computerized. Once it is computerized, this amazing machine, this magical wizard, 
electronic wizard. Once it is computerized, you ask the question, how many ism words in the Quran, ism, the first word, ism, is how many? You press the button and immediately you get the answer, 19. So divide by 19, 19 times 1 on the dot. How did that happen? Coincidence. Now Allah made us to make this discovery in this day and age. When you have the computers, you have the calculators at your disposal. Because when you tell the people, primitive man, the man who is uneducated, he says, look man, there are 19 times the word ism in the Quran and he will go through, wading through 2,000 pages. Ism. 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 Then he's done it. He's fagged out. Now, when he's going to do the next one? The next word is Allah. Allah. You ask the computer, how many Allah words in the Quran? Comes the answer, 2698. Get your calculators out. Divide by 19. It's a 19 times 142 on the dot. How did that happen? Coincidence. I said, imagine. An illiterate man, a man who doesn't know how to read or write. He's got no paper and no pencil. And he's keeping count of every Allah word in the Quran for 23 years. The busiest man in history. The mushriks gave him no peace. The munafiks gave him no peace. The Jews gave him no peace. The Christians gave him no peace. And he is creating a nation, an empire, and a religion. And he's writing a book and he's keeping count. And at one stage he had about eight wives. Can you tell me that Muhammad did the job? <laughs> if you tell me that he had a computer hidden away in the sand and he was going and computerizing everything and coming back and feeding the people with it, I am prepared to believe you. But if you tell me Muhammad did the job, I say, I'm sorry. I don't know. If you want to believe, you may. But I can't believe that this man, a man like you and me, flesh and blood, he did this job keeping count, leave out everything else, only every Allah word in the Quran for 23 years in his head and calculating and seeing that it's exact, it's exact, it's exact. Exact multiple of 19, 19 times 142. Next word, Ar-Rahman. Ask the computer how many Ar-Rahman words in the Quran, comes the answer 57, divide by 19, it's a 19 times 3 on the dot. How did that happen? Coincidence. Now we are not counting the Bismillahs. Only the first Bismillah is counted and in the internally. Because our learned men say that the other Bismillahs are like introduction of a blessings they have been put there. They were not revealed every time. So in case somebody says, look there are 114 surahs and 113 of them were Bismillahs. So look wait. We are saying the first Bismillahs, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen, the first Bismillah is counted. And the others are internally, altogether, 57 Ar-Rahmans in the Quran. How did that happen? Coincidence. The next word, Ar-Rahim, ask the computer how many Ar-Rahim words in the Quran, comes the answer, 114, divide by 19, 19 times 6, on the dot. So how did that happen? Coincidence. Keep at it, keep at it, watch what happens. There are 114 Ar-Rahims, as if divided one each for every surah. Exact! 114 surahs, 114 Ar-Rahims. How did that happen? Coincidence. I says, you know, there are 114 surahs. You can establish it anytime. In any Quran, every Quran. So 114 surahs must have 114 seals. You know the stamp, rubber stamp from his authority that this is my book, this is my book. You know, like an official document, summons, or affidavit, or anything. You need a, an official stamp on it. So the official stamp is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, whether written in a straight line or whether written in a monogram, monogram form, anyhow, it must have 114 surahs, must have 114 rubber stamps. Coming from Allah, coming from Allah, coming from Allah. If that happened, 114 surahs had 114 bismillahs, what would he say? How did, why, how, why, why did it happen? What, how did it happen? He says it's a coincidence. So now, he said, you look at surah 9, surah 9, look at it. He says, well, but what about surah 9? 
He said, well, what about Surah 9? He said, well, look at it. So we look at Surah 9, that's Surah Tawbah. There's no Bismillah. In every Quran in the world, there's no Bismillah. Can you believe such a thing? Look, it's a beautiful formula. Starting in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. In the name, every surah begins. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kula Uzubir Bin Nas. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kula Uzubir Bil Falak. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kulhu Allah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Tabbat Yadash. Every chapter of the Quran begins with this most beautiful formula. But for some mysterious reason, Surah Tawbah hasn't got it. Hasn't got it. Any Quran in the world. You go to China, you get a Quran, it's not there. You go to Nigeria, you find a Quran, it's not there. Every Quran in the world is minus Bismillah in Surah 9. Now, is that a coincidence? Is that a coincidence? No. Can you see that? You're saying coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. Now, it's breaking your sickness. It's look. Is this a coincidence? He says, no, it's deliberately done. How did it happen? So, our learned men will give us an explanation. He says, Surah Tawbah, Tawbah means repentance, is an ultimatum. Allah Baritala gives to the mushriks. They had broken a treaty. They had entered into a treaty with the Muslims and unilaterally they broke the treaty, like Smith had done the UDI. The mushriks did the same 1400 years ago. The UDI. Unilateral declaration of independence. So Allah bari ta'ala gives them an ultimatum. He says, put things right, four months in which to put things right. Otherwise, a declaration of war by Allah and His Messenger. And by the time he reaches verse 3, he says, وَبَشِّرِ اللَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِعَزَابٍ عَلِيمٍ And he proclaimed to the unbeliever a grievous penalty. Now when you talk like that, now we can see Bismillah is uncalled for. When you're talking about war, when you talk about fighting, it doesn't need, like you. Going out, somebody snatches your wife's handbag. So what do you do? You go and run and you grapple the fellow, catch him. And he's saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, I'm a nice, very kind-hearted old gentleman. But if you don't return that handbag, I'll break your neck for you. Is that how you talk? No. If it calls for breaking a guy's neck, say, give that thing back, I'll break your neck for you. Oh, you know, you use so many other superlatives with it. Huh? So Allah does the same. Put things right or declaration of war. So they say, Bismillah is uncalled for. It's not necessary under those circumstances. But he's created a problem for himself. Can you see? He said, I'll fix you up with 19. Now he's got 114 surahs and only 113 Bismillahs. And 113 is not a multiple of 19, is it? It's not. 114 is a multiple. But 113 Bismillah, so it's short of one. He's created a problem for himself. You know, our author is creating problems. He's got nothing else to do, it looks like. He's creating problems for himself. Now, the beauty, the beauty of any performance is you create a problem and you solve the problem. Whether it is in mathematics, acrobatics, aer aeronautics, aquatics, you know, the guy goes on top of that high platform and he dives like a jackknife into the water without splashing very much. So we applaud. This is great. Because you know, you and I, if we did that, the whole swimming pool would run out of the way. So he says, great. Then he goes up again. And he makes one and a half somersault in midday. And then he goes into the water. So what do we do? We applaud again. He did it. He goes up again. Now he does two and a half somersault in midday. And he goes into the water. What do we do? We applaud. Create a problem, solve a problem. We are in the circus. In mathematics, in anything, you create a problem, solve a problem. And the manner in which one solves the problem, we applaud. This is great, this guy is great. He, he did it. So our author, he created a problem. 114 surahs and 113 bismillahs. And 113 is not a multiple of 19. So what does he do? He said, right, very easy, very easy. Look what he does. Surah Tawbah hasn't got it. So count. Tawbah, next one, Yunus. Hud, Yusuf, Raad, Ibrahim, these are the names of the surahs. Count 19 and you'll find the missing one. You count 19 from Toba and you'll find the missing one. How? Not slip short. Not slip short. You see, 19 from Surah Toba is Surah Namal. That's Surah number 27. It begins. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
طاسين تلك آيات القرآن وكتاب مبين بسم الله is there but you know he could have put بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طاسين could he have done that could we have, would we have questioned him why did you do that look it's his business it's a toba I don't want it Now he said, look, I want you to say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Taseed. You gonna say, why are you making me to say twice? No, that's his business. He said, look, I want to read twice. But that's a slipshod job. <laughs> that's you and me, we do jobs like that. Not him. This author of ours, he is a perfectionist. He is perfection and he's a perfectionist. He does a perfect job. So what he does is, he introduces the story of Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam. Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam was a prophet as well as a king. You know, we talk about the wisdom of Solomon. He was a wise man, very clever man. But according to the Bible, he had 1,000 wives and concubines. I don't know how he made such a mistake. 1,000 wives and concubines he had, you know, but we call him his wives. I can't believe such a story, but they say 1,000 wives and concubines he had. What he does with so many, I don't know. But Suleiman alayhi salam on his adjoining kingdom was Bilqis, the queen of Sheba. And Bilqis and her people were a very cultured people. You heard about the queen of Sheba? Yes. And her gold mines? Yes. So Bilqis and her people were a very cultured people. But they were worshipping the elements, worshipping the sun, the moon, the stars, the heavenly bodies. And as such they were mushriks. And according to the religion of Musa alayhi salam, according to the religion of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, and according to the religion of Islam, shirk is one of the most abominable of crimes, sins in the sight of Allah. Shirk, associating any being with God. Allah says, I will forgive anything, everything. This is his business. He made this mistake and that mistake and that sin and that sin, he can forgive you. One thing he said, I will not forgive, is shirk, associating partners with me. That I will not forgive. So Hazrat Sulaiman sees that on his adjoining kingdom, Bilqis, and her people were an idolatrous people. So he feels compassion for them, mercy for them. So he writes a letter, and Bilqis receives a letter. This is how the letter begins. It begins. Qalat, she said, after receiving the letter, she calls up her ministers and she's talking to them, sharing with them, look, this knowledge about this letter. Qalat, she said, Ya ayyuhal mala'u, so O ye my ministers, inni ulkiya ilayya kitabun kareem. Verily there has come to me a letter deserving of great respect. In other words, don't reject it out of hand. Think well before you answer. It's a letter, she's preparing their minds to be responsive to the message. So look, it's a letter which deserves great respect. Innahu min Sulaimana, very it is from Sulaiman, wa innahu, and it begins, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, right in the middle of a surah. Is that a coincidence? No. Can you see? Right in the middle, That's, he doesn't do things like that. It's right in the middle, he puts Bismillah. And by putting that Bismillah, you know what he has done? He has fulfilled that one missing Bismillah, completed that. He was short of one, he completed that. Without this Bismillah, he would have been short of one uh, Ism word of the Quran. Without this Bismillah, one Allah word of the Quran, he would have been short of. One Ar-Rahman word of the Quran, he would have been short of. One Ar-Rahim word of the Quran, he would have been short of. All that he did with one sentence. He completed his 114 and besides that, without this Bismillah, he would be short of each and every one of them. One, 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 he would be short of everything. He did all that. And at the same time, he's teaching the lords of the world. You know, these rulers of ours. The letter continues. Allah ta'alu alayya. Say, be not arrogant against me. Receive it in the spirit in which I am sending it to you. Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam says, wa, 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 uh, Allah ta'alu alayya. Wa tuni muslimin. But come to me in total submission to the will of God. What, what our author is doing? Number one, he's telling us that when you are in a position of power like Bilkis, don't push things down people's throats. Get the will from cooperation. 
as Allah says, wa amruhum shura abaynahum, that you arrange your affairs by mutual deliberation, number one. Then again, when you are in a position of power like Suleiman, you can bluff the world. You know, I was interested in Bilkis and her people, but at the back of your mind, it was Bilkis's gold that you were interested in. It was Bilkis' beauty that you were interested in. But you're bluffing the people, you know, I care for a spiritual welfare, but you're only interested in gold or her woman. She said, no. So when you write, you write as in the presence of God. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. You are ever conscious that Allah is an eternal witness to all your hidden thoughts and deeds. All this, this author of our did. <laughs> Tell me Muhammad did it. Tell me he did it. You must be sick. You must be really sick. You know, some kind of spiritual jaundice. You say Muhammad did it? Look, you may believe it. But I know. Muhammad and a thousand Muhammad put together can't do this. With all your computers and your calculators, you can't do this. Now, there is another visual aspect of this miracle. That the Quran is the only religious book on earth which has certain combinations of words affixed at the beginning of certain surahs which have no apparent meaning. Apparently, no meaning. Like, for example, Surah Baqarah, that's the second surah, begins, Alif, Lam, Mim, Alif, Lam, Mim. What is Alif, Lam, Mim? Our Nabi said there are letters, three letters. Alif, Lam, Mim is not a word. Arabic letters, Alif, La, Mim, on the face of it makes no sense. Ha, Mim, Ya, Sin, Ta, Sin, Mim, Qaf, Noon. These are only letters, no apparent meaning. So it's the only book on the face of the earth which has certain chapters beginning with certain formulas without any apparent meaning. We call them Muqatta'ats, means abbreviated letters, cut up letters, short letters. Of the Arabic alphabet of 28 letters, half of them are involved in these mukatta'ats. They are Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Sod, Ta, Sin, Qaf, Nun, Ha. Fourteen letters are involved in those mukatta'ats, abbreviated letters. These fourteen letters They go to form 14 different formulas, like this. Alif, Lam, Mim, Ha, Mim, Alif, Lam, Ra, Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra, Ta, Sin, Ta, Sin, Mim, Ya, Sin, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Sod, Alif, Lam, Mim, Sod, Sod, Qaf, Ha, Mim, Ain, Sin, Qaf, Noon, Ta, Ha. 14 letters go to form 14 different formulas. These 14 formulas they occur in 29 surahs. These are, we don't want to go through all them, I don't want to waste too much of your time. They occur in 29 surahs, 29 chapters. Now, a quick summary of what I said. There are 14 letters involved in the Mukattas. They occur 14 times, in, I'm sorry, in 14 different combinations, and they occur in 29 surahs. Add 14 plus 14 plus 29. How many? 57. Divide by 19. 19 times 3 on the dot. How did it happen? Coincidence. Watch. I says, you know, when I stumbled across this, I felt that the fittest people I should share this with would be the Hufas, Hafiz al Quran. Because like this, I'm talking to you, I say, Surah Muddassir, it's hard for you to remember. Surah Namal, hard for you to remember. Am I right? It's hard for you to remember. You know, he said, maybe I'm thrilling you, but the half is you remember. Mm -hmm. Surah al alak mm -hmm. he knows, he remembers what I'm talking about. So I said, look, the first person I'm going to share this with must be the Hufaz, the half of the Quran. So I started catching up one by one. The elder half is in Durban. So I tell them, half is up. Half is up means respected half is in my language, you see. I says, you know, I have stumbled across one of the mightiest miracles in creation. So I said, yes, and he's very skeptical, thinking that something has gone wrong. You know, especially when a people gets, when we reach age, you know, we have a saying in our language, Sati and Buddhi Nati. Means when you are around 60, your senses depart. <laughs> so he says, you know, says, he said, yes. I said, yes. 
I said, you know what it is? He says, no. I said, it's the Quran. He said, oh, that I know. I said, no, no, not like that. Your father told you, your Mawlid Sahib, your Shaykh Imam told you. No, 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 not like that. I want you to see, feel, touch, and verify yourself. And to do that, I said, I want you to do a little bit of homework. When you say about homework, the harvest, sh 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 she was tremors. A little bit of a homework. So what homework? I says, you know Surah Qaf? He said, yes. I says, chapter 50 of the Holy Quran. He said, yes, I know. So I said, look, I want you to count the number of Qafs in Surah Qaf. But I said, do it like this. I said, watch my fingers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qaf wal Quran al-Majid. Bal ajibu anjahum munzirum minhum. Faqal al-Kafirun haza shayun ajib. Iza mitna wa kunna turaban. Thalika rajum ba'id. Qad alimna matan qusul ardu. So every time the Qaf occur, I'm putting up my fingers. Not when it's calf. Big difference between calf and calf. Some of our fools, you know, who are teaching our children, they don't know the difference between a calf and a calf. They say, Quran, the Quran speaks. And Quran, Jesus in the Quran. Have you heard that before? Quran. A sick. They teach our children. Quran, Quran, what Quran? Allah is saying, Qaf, wal Quran al Majid. Qaf, wal Quran al Majid. It's the Qaf. بَلْ أَجِبُوا أَنْجَاهُمْ مُنْزِرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا شَيْءٌ عَجِيبٌ اِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجُمْ بَعِيدٌ قَدْ أَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ وَإِنَّنَا كِتَابٌ كِتَابٌ حَفِيزٌ بَلْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاهُمْ فَهُمْ فِي أَمْرٍ مَرِيجٍ we are only one tenth of the way. I want you to finish that Quran, that Surah, and come back to me and tell me how many Qafs in Surah Qaf. You know what? Nobody ever comes back. Nobody, nobody ever comes back. You know, we are a dead people on the right road. We are a dead people. The Kafir is alive on the wrong road. We are dead as door is nailed down. We even haven't got a healthy curiosity. Nobody ever comes back. And you, I want to know whether you're going to do the job. Go home and it won't take you five minutes. Wallah, this Surah Qaf won't take you five minutes to count the number of cows in Surah Qaf. But now this non-Muslim brothers of ours. How will they do the job? You know, this visual miracle is so unique. They don't have to know Arabic to see this. Unless spiritually they are blind. Physical blindness, you have to ask somebody else. But spiritually blind, you can't see. But otherwise, I said, you don't have to know Arabic anymore to see, witness to this miracle, this visual miracle. You don't have to know Arabic. Everything else we are telling, it says, you know, when the Quran is beautifully chanted, you heard our, our half is reading. Even we who don't understand Arabic, it makes tears to roll down our cheeks. I've seen it happen to non-Muslims. They move, they vibrate. A.J. Arbery, an Englishman, an Englishman, he wrote a translation of the Holy Quran. He is died a Christian. A.J. Arbery. He says, whenever I hear the Quran chanted, beautifully read, it is as though I'm listening to music. Underneath the flowing melody, there is sounding all the time the insistent beat of a drum. It is like the beating of my heart. It moves, vibrates you. Whether you understand it or you don't understand it. So this is Allah's kalam. But the unbeliever, he says, no, I can't see it, I don't feel it. And it's possible he doesn't feel it. He's immunized himself against it. It's quite all right. Now, I say, you blind ones, see. Physically, you can see this, and you don't have to know Arabic anymore. I say, you know, Surah Qaf, chapter 50, it begins with Qaf. And what is the essential characteristic of a Qaf? Look, there it is. Qaf is a head with two dots. Can you see it? It's a head with two dots. Whether it's a solid head with two dots or whether it's a hollow head with two dots. Look. Hollow head or solid head. Look for how many heads with two dots. That's all. Can't you see that? Look, that's all. You don't have to know Arabic. Look for a head with two dots. Whether it's a hollow head or a solid head. It won't take you five minutes. And you Muslims, you must also do the same. Because then it strengthens your Iman. You see it with your own eyes and you count it yourself. And then when you're counting, you find how difficult it is. For a man, an ummi, a person who doesn't know how to read or write, he's got no paper and no pencil for him to do this job. 
When you're just counting, you might make a mistake and you have to count again to get your 57. Count them. There are 57. I say divide by 19. This is 19 times 3 on the dot. How did that happen? Coincidence. There is another surah. Surah 42. It begins. Ha mim ain sin qaf. Ha mim ain sin qaf. What it means is, count the ha's and the memes and the ains and the sins and the qafs, pull them together, divide by 19, exact multiple of 19. But you haven't done one yet. And you're going to ride five horses in a circus. You know, you're going to fall, get hurt when you can't ride one. I said, look, the last letter, qaf. You know what a qaf looks like? Of course you know by now. It's a head with two dots. Whether it's a solid head or a hollow head, a head with two dots, count. It won't take you five minutes. You know how many? Again, 57. Again, 57. Look, you can verify tonight before you go to sleep. It will take you altogether 10 minutes. This is 57, that is 57. 57 divided by 19, again, 19 times 3, on the dot. How did it happen? The goat bleeds, coincidence. Add them together. 57, 57. How many? 114. Divided by 19, 19 times 6 on the dot. How did it happen? Coincidence. This is 114 surahs. The author is telling you that each and every surah says, Qaf wal Quran il Majid. It says, Qaf by the glorious Quran, as if telling you, A, A is for apple, it's Qaf, Qaf is for Quran. Each and every chapter is the Quran, divided one each. Each and every chapter is the Quran, the whole Quran and nothing but the Quran. But look, anybody doing this job, even Muhammad, even if he had those computers and calculators, he must have some difficulty, no? Should. So I said he had. Our author is showing us something. He wants to show us that whoever did the job, there was some problem in his mind. You see, when he did this job, who did it? When he did this job, he started with Surah 42 and he did it quite easily. Ha, mm, I'm seen cough, and mm, mm, add one here, went to three there, mm, mm, all in his head, he did it. He did it. But first, what he had to do? He had to compose it. He had to compose it. Where? In his head. Because he's got no paper and no pencil and he can't read and write, so he must do it in his head. So he composed it like, Qaf wal Quran al Majid wal Ajibu wan Jahum. And then the unwritten word, he had to memorize it. Because when he dictated it, he dictated it as if he was a Hafiz. Already. As if he had memorized it. And Allah says so. Wa ma kunta tatlu min qablihi min kitabin. He said, You were not in the habit of reading as if out of a book, like a Hafiz al Quran. Nor were you able to transcribe it with your right hand. Is the In that case, these talkers of vanity, these babblers in the marketplaces, they might have had some reason to doubt that you wrote the book. Allah says they haven't got a thing on you. It's a dog's bark, it's the caravan moves on. You don't have to worry about the dog's barking. Carry on. You know, you couldn't read, you couldn't write, you got no paper, you got no pencil. How could you have done this job? Allah assures us that he never did this job. He was not in the habit of reading out of as if as reading as if out of a book, like Hafiz. And how do you become a Hafiz? By repeating. And how do you repeat? You compose. And after composing, how can you repeat the unwritten word saying? Try. One sentence you concoct in your head and you try and memorize that sentence without seeing it, without writing it. Try. So he did the first one, Surah 42. Mm, easy. You know, our author is a genius, he did the job. But when he came to Surah Qaf, chapter 50, he found some difficulty. So he wrote it in his head, composed it, he memorized it, then he starts counting it in his head. He says, Qaf, wal Quran il Majid, wal Quran il Majid, wal Ajibu an Jahum munzirum minhum, faqal al Kafirun haza shayun ajib. He's counting in his head. He counted, 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 and when he finished it, shh, 58. 
So you divide by 19. Say 19 times 3, 57, remainder 1. What is he going to do? Either he has another 18 to complete the unit, or take out 1. What would you do? What would you have done? What would you have done? Take out 1. Yeah, we are human beings. Now what you want to start with another 18? By the time you do 18, you might be another 20 you get. So you're going to carry on. When are you going to get your exact figure? So easier to take out one. But which one? So he starts again in his head. He starts. He says, cough. Oh, very easy. Rub it off. Problem is solved. But no, man. He wants you to know that in that surah you must count coughs. That's the kingpin of the whole scheme. So it must remain. If you rub that calf out, you will know that where you're going to count the calves and where you're going to count lamb and what. No, you won't know. So it must remain. So, well, Quran al Majid. Oh, very easy. If he can, Quran, if he rubs that out, in place of Quran, he can use 35 other titles of the Quran in the Quran. He could say, Qaf, well, Kitab al Majid, problem will be solved. Qaf, wal Burhan al Majid, Qaf, wal Zikr al Majid, Qaf, with Tanz al Majid, Qaf, wal Nur al Majid. 35 different titles he could have substituted, anyone. And we wouldn't have known what had happened. He would have got his count right. But no, he wants you to know that Qaf stands for Quran and not K. Qaf, and he's going to divide them all, one each, to tell you that each and every chapter is the Quran. So it must remain. Of well, Quran al Majid, it must remain. If you change the well, Kitab al Majid, he would have solved the problem, but you would know that Qaf is for Quran. And he carries on until he reaches verse 12. Verse 12, 13, 14. And around that, in his mind, he sees the biggest cluster of Qaf, like a bunch of five Barlinka grapes. You know those black ones, they are in season now. So in his mind he sees a cough, 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 five. He says, man, shh, I must get rid of one of these, <laughs> because otherwise man, there's no end to this. <laughs> you are now I mean, a human being, you must get tired. So he says, Let, let's eliminate one. Which one? But now the problem arises, you ask me, say, look, Mr. Didat. You mean to say the Quran is changed? I says, no. But you said there were 58 coughs. I said, yes. Where? I said, in the mind of the author. So you know his mind? I says, no. He knows mine, he knows our minds. But we don't know his. We don't know his mind. We don't know what he's thinking, what he's planning, we don't know. Then how do you know that there were 58 there in the mind of the author? I said, he gives us a clue. If he shows it to you, you can see it. That he had 58 in his head. Astaghfirullah. He had 58 in his mind. So, which one he's going to eliminate, I'll show you just now. What he did. He said, verse 13 and 12. Kazzabata qablahum qablahum qawmu nuhim. Watch my fingers. Wa ashab al-rathi wa thamud wa adum wa fir'aunu wa ikhwanu lut wa ashab al-aykati wa qawmu tubba. كُلُّ كَزَّبَ الرُّسُلُ وَحَقَّ وَعِيدُ Only four. I said there were five there. You know where the fifth one was? Here. وَإِخْوَانُ لُوتِ This should have been قَوْمُ لُوتِ You know why? Because twelve times, other places in the Qur'an, monotonously, Allah is saying قَوْمُ لُوتِ قَوْمُ لُوتِ For that abominable people who were destroyed for their unnatural lusts. In America they call them gays, gays now, gays. You know, for, a, for the sickness they call them gays, very nice, happy, lucky people. Gays. 300,000 gathered in June, in San Francisco on a pilgrimage, last June, led by 50 lesbians and motorcycles. Qawm Ulut. That Qawm Ulut Allah describes in the Quran, 12 places, is a Qawm Ulut, Qawm Ulut, Qawm Ulut, Qawm Ulut, Qawm Ulut. Monotonously, as if he doesn't know synonyms. And you know, synonym, synonym means, you know, you use different words meaning the same thing. It lends fragrance to speech, it beautifies your talk. I said, fragrance to speech, it beautifies your talk. This is a synonym. Fragrance 
beautify. You see? So I'm saying the same thing, but I'm using different words. It lends beauty to speech. And our author, 12 times, Komolut, Komolut, Komolut. He didn't know that he didn't have another word. He said, what is this? Same word, same word again. And yet the same author, look, he changes four times in two verses. Watch. The same author for the same word. Now he's changing four times to show you that he knows synonyms. Four times he changes in two verses. Watch. He says, Kazabata Kablahum, Qawm Nuhin. He uses the word Qawm for people. Wa Ashab al Rasi. He uses the word Ashab for people. Wa Thamud. And without adding an adjective, he conveys the idea of people. This author of ours. Wa Adum wa Fir'aun wa Ikhwan Lut. In two verses, he changed four times. And yet throughout the Quran, he never changed. Say, Qamulut, 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 Qamulut. Now the thirteenth time, in the thirteenth verse, he changed. Immediately, look, look, if an author is doing that kind of one repetition, he must have had a reason. Why keeps on repeating the same word, monotonously? Now for the thirteenth time, in the thirteenth verse, he changes. Now he says, Wa ikhwan ulut, instead of Qamulut. It was Qawm Ulut, throughout, 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 no change, now he changes. So I said, look, it must have gone through his mind that if I had Qawm Ulut here, he'll be 58 Qawfs, and 58 is not a multiple of 19. He is showing it to us. He said, look, this is an omnipotent, omniscient being doing the job. This is not happening by coincidences. Can't you see? It's not a coincidence. If 13 times it's a Qawm Ulut, it will be coincidence. He said, no, 12 times I'm doing it, deliberately. And 13th time I'm changing. Can't you see? Something is going through his mind. He says, look, I know, you'll see it one day. He wants you to see it. That he's at work. That this is Allah's kalam. You know, so Allah says, this is the system that he has established to protect his book from any kind of tampering. Every surah you take, alif, lam, meme. Count the alis and the lams and the memes. Divide by 19, exact multiple of 19. Ha, meme. Add the ha's and the memes. Pull them together. Divide by 19, exact multiple of 19. Ya, seen. Add the ya's and the scenes. Pull them together. Divide by 19, exact multiple of 19. Everyone, exact multiple of 19. All physical, visual. Visual. You don't have to, anybody to explain to you, tell you interpretation. No interpretation is required. You count them with your eyes and you see it with your eyes that no human beings or group of human beings could have ever devised this system of protecting a book from any type of tampering. In 1400 years, if we lost a verse with an alif or a lam or a meme in Surah Baqarah, the count would have gone off. In 1400 years, if somebody added a sentence, a verse with an alif or a lam or a meme, your count would have gone off. After 1,400 years, you can count it and you verify it. This is man, exact, exact, exact. Who did it? Muhammad did it? You say he did it? I said, then you have to worship him. He is your God. He is the creator of this universe. He says, I'm not. I'm a man like you. <laughs> Believe in Allah. Worship him and don't associate partners with him. So Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the revelation. For us. And it is for us to protect it. What you? You gonna protect this book? His book? You gonna protect it? He says, this is my job. My book? I'll see to it that it is protected. Now, the odds of this book being formulated on this basis. The computer was asked, what are the odds? So the answer was given 606. 126 septillions to one against it occurring. The odds, the miraculous nature. And after finding this figure, by the day we are making discoveries, by the day, joking, jokingly, we are making discoveries now. Jokingly. I'll show you. Now we find out in the Quran the number of times numbers are, are spoken of in the Quran. Like Ahad, Ahad means one, it's a number. Isnain means two, number. Thalasa means three, number. The number of times numbers are mentioned in the Quran are 285 times. 
Divide by 19, you say 19 times 6 on the dot. The number of time numbers are mentioned in the Quran is a multiple of 19. Now those numbers, add them, add them up. You add the numbers, it comes to 174,591, the value of those numbers. You add them together, it comes to 174,591. Divide by 19, it's a 19 times 9,189 on the dot. Now you eliminate the repetition, and what you are left with, you add that remaining numbers. It comes to 162,146. Divide by 19, it's a 19 times 8,534 on the dot. Who's doing this? Muhammad doing it? And I said, joking, jokingly, we are making discoveries. You see, this discovery, I'm sharing with the Hafiz friend. We were schooling together. Hafiz uh, Musa, got uh, some bargain, this thing, clothing department in Commercial Road. So I go to him and say, Hafiz, I says, you know, I have discovered a new angle of looking at the Quran. He said, look, I also, you know, the man is, sometimes some people are so enthusiastic, they don't want to listen. You know, now they want to tell you, they say, look, I also came across a man who had a new angle. I said, all right, what's the new angle? He said, you see, he was asking me how many ha-has in the Quran. Ha-has. <laughs> how many ha-has in the Quran? Some sacrilegious, you know, like you're making a joke. How many ha-has in the Quran? So he said, no, what he was talking about was, he said, the surah was shams. So wa shamsi wa duha ha wa al qamari iza tala ha wa nafsim wa ma sawa ha kad afla So he's reading, he's half of the Quran, you see, I'm not. The man is reading and I'm doing like that, counting. Ha 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 ha. When he finishes, I say, you know how is that, how many? He says, no, I said 19. <laughs> joking, joking. Day. I read a book by Dr. Ahmad Sakar. He calls it Islamic orations, you know, khutbas, lectures, sermons. Islamic orations by Dr. Ahmad Sakar from America. In that book of his, he didn't know what he's writing. He's just writing whatever he found. So he says here, he says the number of times months are mentioned in the Quran 19 times. The number of times year is mentioned in the Quran 19 times. But he didn't know that he was helping us in our research. He's just saying, you know, that 19 times the month is used, 19 times is used, but he doesn't know about 19. So, I said, look at it. There is endless, endless research you can do, and you can verify, satisfy, he said, this is not the work of man. And Allah challenges, He challenges. He says, Qul, tell them, La in jitama'atil insu wal jinnu, ala an ya'tu bi misli haza al-Qur'an, لَا يَعْطُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ زَهِيرًا So, قُلْ tell them, لَإِنْ جِتَمَأْتِ الْإِنْسُ وَالْجِنُّ That if the whole of mankind and jinns, spirits, computers, your wizards, your electric wizards, get them together to formulate the right, compose of a book like the Qur'an. So, لَا يَعْطُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ So, you'll never be able to produce the like thereof. وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ زَهِيرًا Even if you backed up each other with help and support, you'll never be able to produce the like of this book. This is, my dear brothers and sisters, Mr. Chairman, for us, at each and every word in the Qur'an, now we realized, I realized, after seeing this, that each and every word was perfectly chosen, chiseled, placed and counted. It was chosen, there is no excuse. You see, there was in the mind skepticism. He said, maybe, you know, if Allah said like this, you know, he's terrifying people with hellfire, hellfire. And the psychologist said, it's not good psychology. <laughs> the psychologist is not good psychology. I say, the psychology is mad. That guy Sprock in America, he made millions writing books on child psychology. Now, after 20 years of making millions, now he said he was wrong. In psychology, he was at the pole. After 20 years, he's made more than 20 million writing books on child psychology. Now he said, you know, he, now he knows he was wrong. <laughs> In the meantime, he made his millions. 
So when Allah tells you something in the Quran, you know it is coming from an omnipotent, omniscient being. Every word is perfectly chosen, chiseled, placed and counted. And this is the book we have. There is not another group on earth that can produce a book that for 14 centuries it has remained so pure without the change of a dot. Now it is our duty, my dear brothers and sisters, that we take up this book, come into first-hand contact with Allah's Kalam. Let Allah speak to us, because He's speaking to us through His book. And share it with people, mend our lives and mend the lives of our environment, change the environment. Because if you don't do that, the punishment is there. You see, this is law. The law comes into force. So, in, in tatawallaw, yastabdil qawman khayrakum. So, if you will not fulfill your duties and obligations, O oh Muslims, yastabdil qawman khayrakum. We will substitute in your place another people. Thumma la yakun amsalakum. Then they will not be like you. May Allah bari ta'ala, you know, not take this honor and the privilege out of our hands. And may we become worthy to deliver his message to the rest of mankind and mend our lives. Wa akhulat da'wan an alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. MashaAllah. As Muslims, we do not applaud to something like that. We say, MashaAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, there are many people here tonight and we are indeed happy to see so many, and there are many outside also. Because we might leave the hall immediately afterwards, let me just remind you that translations of the Quran will be on sale outside at the price of 10 rands for two. The video cassettes on the series will be available soon at 25 rand a cassette. Let me also tell you that it is very rare that you find people delivering lectures and allowing questions at the end. Mr. Ahmad Didat, on any of the topics on which he speaks, allows questions. He allows you to come up to the microphone and make statements. He also allows you to come and rectify him if he has made any mistake as far as you are concerned. But please bear with us this is not a debate we would like to entertain as many questions as possible but if you want to set up a debate on any of the topics please book a hall and write to Mr. Ahmadinat or phone him and he is willing to come and debate the topic on the stage in public on any of the topics on which he specializes but tonight you are free to come up and put your question one proviso that your question is only centered around the topic that was dealt with tonight. Please don't refer to any other thing. And Mr. Ahmad Didat knows what he has said. It's almost unnecessary for me to remind you. He will tell you I did not speak about that. And if you doubt his word, buy the video cassette after to see who is telling a lie. When a person puts a question, I would like you to keep quiet. And please do not laugh if anything is funny. And I would like to add my bit just to strengthen the fact that this book, which is such a wonder, that this book, which is the living miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asks to be read. And I sincerely trust and believe that we will read it with understanding. If there's any brother or person or sister who would like to put a question, he's free to come up to the microphone in front here. There is somebody coming up from the far side. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, sirs. Mr. Ahmadidat, you understand the word miracle? and what it means, cause I heard you too. Now don't you think that God the Almighty and of wisdom would have given Muhammad knowledge to memorize every word that has been telegramized to him out of heaven and would have steered his hand to write the Quran instead of using others and 
to put it together only 23 years after his death because a miracle is instant, not years. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. What I say is that you see the funny thing happened that Jesus Christ, the veritable Son of God according to the Christians, leave out writing anything, not a word of he ever wrote a word in his lifetime, not a word was written. And the things that are written now are written by people who were not even his disciples, like Mark and Luke, were not even one of the twelve. So whatever you are trying to insinuate about the Prophet of Islam is more fitting that criticism on Jesus Christ and the Gospels than on the Quran. Next question, please. Uh, do I understand that? Uh, sorry, uh, if there are any other people who would like to put the question, please come up now. Time is going. Please come up now and queue up here beside, behind the, John. Yes. And if you are not in the queue now, uh, I'll have to stop anybody else from coming up. Good evening, my sir. Into the microphone, please. Uh, I just want to... Uh, uh, do I correctly understand that one cannot... Uh, uh, it's unlikely, most unlikely, uh, to have a sentence made with 19 letters? Do I, do I understand it correctly or not? So I can... I think you didn't hear correctly. Right, you see what I said that, that perhaps, oh. if you remember the words, I said perhaps my words also were perfectly chosen, chiseled and counted. I said perhaps in your lifetime you will not come across a sentence with 19 letters to start your book. That's my exact words. Uh, next question please. Truth and love will win. Love is patient, is kind. Do not lay up treasures. Beware false prophets. There is deceit in lies. I could give you quite a few more sentences with 19 letters each. You can count them. I'm quite surprised um, yeah. that here are about a thousand Muslims who can listen to a presentation like that without standing up and saying a word. Brother, uh, one point please, uh, speak into the mic and secondly I think yes, the sentences which you made, it was pointed out to the brother before you that it was distinctly said that no book starts off or nobody sets out to write a book with 19 letters at the start. I can also sit down now, I can tell you, and write some sentence with 19 letters. Where does sorry Mr. Chairman, not? these sentences are not mine, they are taken out from a book. No, I don't say, I mean you can bring it from anybody, it doesn't start off a book like that, what's the point? Uh, what I want to say is this, that the whole hypothesis about the number 19 was very thoroughly dealt with two years ago in the Muslim Digest and if anybody wants to read that up he can do that for himself where it's very clearly pointed out that the number 19 theory is not Islamic but rather a Baha'i invention that was brought up to bring people away from Islam. I'm surprised that brother, nobody is brother, standing sorry, up. Brother, sorry, excuse me, um, excuse me, please. Yes. You've made about three statements and yes. you've also read sentences. Could we get to the next question, sorry, please? Sorry, can I come to my question? Uh, I'm if waiting you on... Have a question. If you have a question, please come with it. Yes. Well, I'm surprised, Mr. D, that how you can have... Your question, not your surprise, we want your question. <laughs> Mr. If D, that... English, look, if you don't understand English, then you better speak in German and let somebody translate it for you. A question, you ask me a direct question, I'll give you an answer. Now there's no sense in you bringing books that were written some years ago. How, when was it written, that book? You were listening for one and a half hour, you listened to me propounding a subject. And out of that whole one and a half hour, you haven't got a single question. Oh, yes. You have to go and read a book written by somebody else. God has given you intelligence and you claim to have got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit in you. I want to know what the Holy Spirit is telling you now about this, what I have shown you. Either you accept it, either you accept it, or you find what is wrong with what I showed you now. You show one point that you find you can find a flaw. Mr. Dirat, I find it difficult if I can't make any statement that you just pointed out. You have made half a dozen show, already. To you have made half a dozen wrong. statements already. Well, I could uh, make another sorry. 20, 50 statements sorry. if you like. So from Brother. This in Sorry. fairness, no, please. 
I, I said I conduct the meeting, I'm being as fair as possible. If I rule you out of order, I may be right or wrong, but just yeah. you've got to obey somebody. In this sure. case, it's placed the authority is vested in me. Could I say you've made a statement, and I think all the people, if they haven't heard it, I'll tell them to say that you didn't have a single question about what was said here, but you quoted other people as saying this is a Baha'i invention or anything. That is, that's only one of the statements, right? Could I have the next question, please? Could you take your turn there? Please. Can I give my question? No. Could you please go there? We were given ample time. <laughs> May I put this as a point of correction? It is a well known it is well known that the third caliph of Islam, Uthman ordered all conflicting copies of of the Quran to be burnt during his reign. And he arbitrarily decided that Hafsa's edition was the authentic one. That is his, uh, one of Muhammad's uh, Muhammad's wives. The final authentic Quran was determined not by Allah's degree, not by the Prophet of Islam, but by the discretion of a fallible man. Bukhari reports the burning of all other versions of the Quran and establishes Hafsa's edition by Uthman in al Volume 3, page 708. Point of correction. Thank you. Can you see, my dear brothers and sisters, it's a sickness. Can you see the sickness that has got them? One and a half hour, we showed it to you. Count them, count them now physically. Unless you are blind, you ask somebody else. And you don't have to know Arabic. I'm telling you, you don't have to know Arabic. Why don't you do it yourself? It won't take you five minutes. The Quran is here while the other people are asking questions. Why don't you check up and see what I have told you is true or not? Chapter 50, chapter 42. But no, you have, must come out. You have the last word. To make your criticism, I said, now, whatever and however the Qur'an was compiled, you take the Qur'an and the proof is there. Allah Bari Ta'ala tells you, God Almighty tells you in the Qur'an, it is His job to protect it from any type of interpolation, any type of addition or deletion. So you count them now, Surah Qaf, count how many Qafs there? You say 57. Right. If they had somebody added something, it, the count won't be there. If somebody had lost out something, Usman lost out something, the count would have gone off. Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim, again how many times? Seven times Alif Lam Mim Surahs. Such a simple thing, why don't you count the Alifs and the Lams and the Mims? And you see, whether Usman missed out or Hafsa missed out or who missed out. So when you see that today after 1400 years, you, according to your God-given intelligence and your eyesight that God has given you, unless, as I said, you are spiritually blind, spiritually jaundiced, you can't see it. Here is a test being given to you now, a visual miracle, that is this God's work, handiwork of Muhammad's. And if Osman lost out anything or Hafsa lost out anything, you would have found it here. That is what you have to do, produce what is missing. John, could you that put a Mr. question? Did that, what does the Bible say some more about Muhammad? Back again to that lecture. No, Here no, John, comes. John, John, no, please. No, it's just to prove. No, no, please. Okay. Relating only to the topic. Right, though? A copy to the topic. I will rise up a brother like no. I said. John, that is not to do with the nice topic. Let's be fit. No, on. No, uh, John, uh, with respect to you, but uh, we will then have to close the meeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good night, ladies and gentlemen.